Uh, my name's Kay. Nice to meet you, Kay. Tell us about, um, first of all, how old are you? 34. Are you originally from Kensington? No. Where are you from? Uh, Washington Township, New Jersey. Okay, shout out Jersey. Tell us about your childhood growing up. Um, I lived with my mom, my sister Jenna, and my sister uh, Catalina for most of my life. Uh, and then um, later on, there was my sister William and Tiffany. I watched in town so most of my life. Uh, I lived in, uh, you know, Deptford uh, and then Washington Township from like fifth grade on. Um, and it, it was just me and my mom and my two sisters and, you know. Yeah, what happened to you? Yeah. My dad, he wasn't, he wasn't in my life. Um, my stepdad, my stepdad, Vince, which was my sister, Jenna and Catalina's dad, he was my dad. I knew him since I was um, two, before my sister was even born. I'm the oldest. All right. Um, but he he passed away when I was 13. He, mm. he killed himself. So oh, man. That was, that was rough, but. Do you have any favorite childhood memories you can think of? Um, I would say going to the beach. That's nice, right? Um, I'm sorry. <laughs> What's your favorite color? Uh, purple. Purple? What are some of your favorite foods? I'm just trying not to make you cry, you know, I'm sorry. I'm trying Your to switch up the question so, so she won't up. cry. You're a strong survivor. You'll get through this. They can't stop you, love. You're strong. You'll get through this. Yeah, um, I don't know. I eat all kinds of shit. I love everything. All kinds of food. All right. How far do you go in school? I graduated uh, senior year. Um, I started college eventually. Awesome. <laughs> but I dropped out after three days. I didn't like it. All right. I and hear you. Um, I went to a trade school, which I almost finished to be a medical assistant. Nice. But then I lost my car. So. How you lose? How you lost your car? Well, my uncle he took it back. Oh. We had a contract, and I followed the contract. So I don't know why it got taken back, but mm -hmm. it, it is what it is. <laughs> All right. I'm sorry, love. So let's get right into it. How did your addiction start? Started. My childhood was rough, um, and then we found out that my little sister was gonna die, and uh, that's pretty much how it started with drinking and drugs. And I was always just open to anything, and you know, uh, my best friend Malin, um, her boyfriend actually. You know, he was the first one to, you know, give it to us. He didn't force it on us, but... You know, what, what, what was it? Heroin. Real heroin. <laughs> Brown dope, right? Yes. Okay. I was just always open to doing drugs. I was a very free spirit, like a gypsy. <laughs> like, um, just open to partying and, and just drugs and... childhood I didn't go out as a teen I didn't party I didn't do drugs um, it wasn't that big of a deal to me but when okay so when do you realize you had an addiction um, actually when I was drinking I, I was an alcoholic I drank morning noon and night by myself with people um, I would get happy angry sad I didn't throw up I would keep drinking until I blacked out, which was really bad because mm. you just kept going and going and going and going. Right. At least when you throw up, you pass out. I loved to party and get fucked up. People would egg me on, and I would just keep going. And so were you like I also the life? Kill pain. So were you like the life of the party? Pretty much. But then they would get annoyed with me because it was too much for them. But they got it to that point. Okay. So now <laughs> let's fast forward. How do we get to this point? Um, all my friends 
are dead. My closest family is dead. Um, my sister died two years ago, and that that really messed me up really bad. And then um, a guy who his name was Les. He was like a father figure to me and my husband too. And um, he he passed two months after my sister. So that really was just. That was bad. <laughs> so that just drove you into the deep ends because death yeah. is a I was clean trigger. for nine years. What? Yeah. Nine years? Mm -hmm. Oh my God. I Damn. had two kids, 12 year old daughter and an eight year old son. And I found out I was pregnant with my boy and I had to get clean. So Damn. I got clean. So nine years you was clean and because of death, that's what made you relapse. That's trigger you? Yeah. So now, what? I went through a lot of death though. Yeah. And I didn't use. I stayed clean, but my sister really, it got me. And then less. That was bad. Yeah, I'm so sorry, love. Damn. Uh, what's a day in a lifeline? All right. Um, I don't really live down here, but I'm down here a lot, like all the time. Um, I am technically homeless at the moment. It's been a couple months. Uh, me and my husband have been separated for like a year and oh, like a year and a half, maybe a little over. And uh, two months ago, I had to leave the house. He has the kids, um, and you know I've just been going back and forth between New Jersey and here. But honestly, it's better over here because in Jersey you can't just be around; you'll get arrested for no reason at all. How, how difficult is it for you living out here? Um, honestly, it's not really that. It is and it isn't. Like, it's easy to get food. It's e there's people out here. It's easy to get clothes. But it's cold or it's hot. You know, it's, it's hard sitting on the ground. So they called uh, a sample this morning. I was about to go out and, you know, do, you know, boost and make some money. And, um, I didn't go out yet. And I wish I did. Because also today, my phone was fucking stolen. They went right in my little bag on my back and took it out while I was, you know, out after doing a shot. And I'm pissed because I need that phone to, to talk to my girlfriend, to talk to my kids, to talk to whoever I need to talk to, do what I need to do, and now I don't right. have it, so. Damn. Um, bad day, huh? But yeah, yeah, it has been. So I went to go get the sample, right? And mm -hmm. I didn't get it, and I'm just like, what the fuck, you know? It, yeah. it normally goes to people who really don't need it. You know, like, it always seems like you don't get it if you actually need it. I normally have money, I normally have drugs, I'm normally good, I don't today. <laughs> um, I got some help, you know, uh, from, you know, a couple friends, but other than that, I'd be asked out. So, I didn't get it, and, and I'm just like, what the fuck, like, how, like, people who need it never get it. Well, the black boy starts laughing, thinks it's funny, mimicking me and shit. He has his phone in my face, recording it. And you can see, like, he's taking pleasure, pleasure in it. You know, like, it's, it's funny. It's, it's funny to watch people suffering. And then I slapped the phone out of his hand and I got punched in the face. Oh my God, let's see how bad it is. You say you slapped the phone out of his hand? Mm -hmm. So that's a that's something you learn not to do, dear, because these the guys is crazy. Is, the thing is, is, I didn't even realize. I'm sorry that happened. So. I hope you feel better. So much noise out here, y'all. We I right know. under the L. We got like three more minutes and we done it, right? Yeah. Like, like three more minutes, brother, because it's so loud out here. So now how do you stay safe out here, dear? Um. I mean, even though I'm little, I, I can fight pretty good. I've never been knocked down by a man punching me in the face before. So this is a first. And he, he was a man, but he was not a huge, big dude. Like, he really got me good. Knocked my tooth almost out, almost went through my lip. It's like, ripped open. I probably should need stitches, but I don't want that. 
Um, now, why, why, why you didn't call the cops on him? I ain't a snitch. <laughs> because you know what that what's going to happen out here when you do that, right? Yeah, one, yeah, you, you snitch, you're going to get stitches. You can't come back out here. No, no more if you'll you do be that. done. You'll be done. And plus, I just don't do that anyway. I've been raised not to do that. <laughs> what advice would you give to people who are in recovery? Um, just take one day at a time. I would think of uh, the people who passed away on me who OD'd and that they would still be here and um, I don't know just look for people to help you through or things to help you through, different things to do or hobbies or places, you know, things like that, mm -hmm. family, friends. Okay. Look at this, because this is fucking sad. Tell us about Kensington, for those who don't know about it. I heard they are locking people up for using drugs. What's been going on out yeah, here? Yeah, um, you get locked up so loud. For, for holding a piece of foil. Some people use foil to smoke their dope. Uh -huh. Even if it's not used, they'll lock you up. What? Yeah, when before they would watch you get high. Now you get tickets locked up. Mm. So they all... It's dirty. People are dying from this xylazine trank bullshit. It's eating holes in their skin. There's parasites getting put have, into our do, body. Do you have any I bad wounds? I got these little ones. They were bigger. See how swollen my hands are, though? That's yeah. from missing. They were a lot more swollen, pulsating, burning. It's, it's painful. I have one on my foot. But people's whole arms look like meat. I see, I've it, seen it. It smells, it's gross, and yeah. they're dying, and they still shoot in it. I don't do that, but... Do you eventually want to get out of Kensington and get your life together? Are you going to try to get out of here again? I've been working on it. Um, I need to just do it, but I, I really need a place to be. Because if I go to rehab and get out, I know I'm not going to stay clean if I'm out here, if I'm on any streets. How can you? Right. And I, I really want to be, I don't want to be out here, and I miss my kids. And I, it's just, it sucks. It right. sucks being on these drugs. It's it's horrible. It, it's not even real heroin. Real heroin ain't good neither, but this shit's horrible. It's killing people. It's tearing us apart. It's killing our veins. It's eating us alive. Like, the government's killing us. Okay, dear, we're going to keep you in our prayers. And we hope that things get better for you, and I'll continue to check on you, all right? All right. If you had one wish, what would you wish for? Um, I guess just to, like, start over. Start over? Yeah. If you have family or your friends see this video, what message would you like to send to them? Just that I love them. I miss them. Okay. What are some things you love most about yourself? Um, I don't know. I'm carefree. I'm loyal. I'm loving. What's your um, zodiac sign? A Leo. Shout out to the Leo. Show your girl some love. Okay. This one, what are your short-term goals now? Um, I want to get a place to live. I want to get clean. I want to get my kids. I want to get uh, a place to live, you know, Eventually, with my girl, I need to get a job. There's a lot of different things, but you know, there are things that can be done. I've done them before. I've been fighting my whole life. What jobs you had in the past? Um, I've done. I've worked on cars. I've worked on houses, painting, crown molding, laying floors. Um, I've worked in like Subway. I've worked as a waitress, um, caterer, pizza place, all kinds of shit. Gotcha. So yeah, this one is to take us home. There are a lot of people who judge, people who struggle with drugs. What's your message for the world? Um, to stop judging, because it's, it's a lot harder than you think. And we're some of the most resilient people out there. We're, we're, we're smart, we're talented. We can think of things and make and do things that you would never think of in your life. You know, um, and, and you know, you have no idea what any of us have been through. You have no idea what you're going to go through, what's going to happen to you, your children. You don't know. So just you can't, you can't judge. That's right. Okay, that's dear. one of the hardest things, that judgment.